they show an appalling lack of judgment by the government, and I think uh, the government should be very worried. Well well Honourable Nanaya Mahuda. Mr. Speaker, two words for the opposition. Cheer up. Cheer up. They don't want to admit it, but the coalition government's plan to reset our direction as a country to build a better, a fairer New Zealand is starting to take shape. Cheer up. Cheer up, opposition members. We implemented the 100-day plan to help set a new direction, and things have been done and achieved. We said we would do these things as a core commitment to reorient where this country was going so that more New Zealanders could benefit. So what have we done? We've passed our families package to boost incomes for around about 385,000 families. We have passed an extension for paid parental leave. Many mothers will benefit from that, so will their children. We will be seeing the increase of the minimum wage to $16.50 starting on the 1st of April this year. And we've announced a target for child poverty rates that I think will start to lead the way in which a whole of government approach will actually do the things that we said we would do for the most vulnerable in our society, because it needs to be done. But more than that, We've said that we would introduce a law to ban overseas speculators from, from buying up homes. And why is that important? Because my colleague Phil Twyford has got an ambitious, ambitious programme that we believe we can achieve. The announcement in terms of Unitech signals that we're not just going to be bystanders, as bystanders in this effort. We want to be partners and partnering with others to help ensure that our Kiwi Build programme to increase home ownership will be something that we will actively pursue. Cheer up, opposition members. Things are happening. The mood out there amongst many New Zealanders is that we're so, so pleased that the government is starting to listen, that we have a government who is listening to the needs in our communities. But then when I think about uh, the fact that orientation has just finished on many campuses. <coughs> Young people themselves are starting to really applaud the fact that this is the first year that, the, that they will have access to free tertiary training. But more than that, it's a signal that they have a government who is prepared to invest in them. It's a signal that we have a government that is prepared to invest in their future and their contribution to the type of economy that we will have. There are many, many positive things that are happening. Most importantly, Ms. Mr Speaker, is what we're doing to ensure that we give back to communities the confidence that we're listening. Because after all, many of the solutions that require uh, uh, support will actually help get the local economy moving. Housing is one of them. When, we, when we're talking about the way in which housing can help not only just build houses, but ensure skills training for young people, ensure that we're investing in uh, communities that sustain themselves, there are projects starting to emerge and people putting their hands up to say, I want to be a part of that. It is a huge, huge contribution to local economic development and opportunity. Mr Speaker, I know that this government is making a huge contribution to the way in which this country is going. The Provincial Growth Fund and the good work of the Minister uh, for Regional Economic Development will continue to tell the story that here is a government that goes back to the regions, back to the provinces, supporting local development, regional development, partnering with local government and business and iwi in a way that's never been done by the previous government. So cheer up, opposition members. Cheer up, because things are changing. The Thank you, Mr Speaker. Well, what a three